going on guys? Welcome back to another video on TGM Guitars. Just want to start the video off saying thank you to everyone who's shown support to the channel over the past couple of months. Slowly seeing that subscriber count rise. I know I've been a bit lacklustre with uploading videos, but I've not really had much content to do. But that's going to change because the next few months it's going to be a little bit busy with uh, new gear and videos like this. Plus you've got my end of year kind of gear rundown. So uh, got all that to look forward to. But if you haven't already and you do enjoy this video, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and leaving a comment down below if you've got any questions. I always try to reply to them if I can. And uh, yeah, thanks for all your support. Anyway, let's jump into the topic of this video. So this is a video I've been sort of gearing up for, getting ready for, for quite a while now. Um, I haven't been able to do it over the past couple of months, quite simply because I've been gigging with my band Rerun, and I've kind of needed my pedal board. So the whole idea is to revamp it, change it around, make it a little bit more sturdy. I've had a few cable failures this year, which is gonna make a lot of people question why I've gone a route I have, but I'll explain that in a bit. And uh, yeah, it's time to revamp it. I've got a couple new pedals coming for Christmas. I'll show those in today's video because I do need to set it up and uh, figure out the wiring, how it's all gonna fit on the board. Um, but there'll be demos coming out for those within the next couple of weeks. But yeah, this is kind of going to service as well as a bit of a review for the pedal patch solder this patch cable kit. So you might be thinking, if I've just mentioned I had a cable failure in the run of gigs, why am I going solderless? And also as an electronic engineer, surely solderless is the work of the devil because you want a good soldered connection, some good leaded solder. Quite simply, I want to be able to wire it quite nicely and use slimline um, jack connectors. With the MD500, I can only push that so far back on the pedal board as it is because the size of the connectors going into the back and that limits me somewhat. And I know there are soldered variants of small little connectors, square plugs out there, but when I've tied it up, it's gonna cost an absolute fortune for me to rewire this. As opposed to buying two of these pedal patch kits um, wiring it up and also it's got the added benefit of I can take a couple of these connectors, a screwdriver, some spare wire in my gig bag, should anything fail during a gig I can make a cable up there and then. Can't do that unless I have a portable soldering iron, don't think a pub is going to let me whip out a soldering iron in the middle of their pub. So that's my reasoning for doing it, we'll find out soon enough if it was a stupid reason um, and that I'll go back to solder connections and also it's the time involved making soldered cables especially when you custom length everything it just it just takes forever and as i said you can't fit them all in and i'll explain that in a minute when i show you the pedal board so without further ado let's get the pedal board apart and uh yeah i'll just talk you through how i'm gonna work through this thing okay so hope this viewpoint isn't too bad i've kind of had to drape a bit of a blue blanket over because this black tabletop was clashing a little bit and you couldn't see it now so if you're unaware, the pedal board I'm using is the Pedal Train Novo 24. Now, it's all great having these rails, you put all of the Velcro down, you can move pedals about, all well and good. Thing is, if you're not moving pedals about, all the Velcro seems to do is attract all this crap, and I have cats. <laughs> and the problem with that is there is cat hair all over this pedal board, it just gets stuck in it, you can't clean it properly. This whole thing needs a clean after a year of gigging, so that's what I'm going to be doing as I take it apart. So, plan is to first of all rip all this off, get all the cabling out, and uh, we'll work from there. So I'll probably time lapse it, a bit of background music, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, so cleaned it up a little bit, hoovered it off. So, as I was saying before, problem you've got with this MD500, these ports on the back are very close together to start with. So that means I can't use these pancake jacks like I use on everything else, because quite simply, you put that in there. Let me find another one. 
Bear with me a second. There we go, there's another one. So I just kind of chucked everything on the floor. That won't go in. So you have to use something along the lines of these. And what that means is once you've put two of them in, you can't move it any more than that, which means you've got to put it directly over one of these rail spacings. So my hope with the pedal patch kit is that I can put this all the way out the top, all the way down the bottom, and it won't matter at all because quite simply, put that all the way down there and I don't need all that room to get the cable down. And as you can see, I've I tried to do it before. I've got a bunch of these standoffs. So I've got a sticky pad on the bottom, you stick them on and you can cable tie your cables onto it. Problem with that is it doesn't stick too well to Velcro. I mean, yeah, you can put some Velcro on there, but that'd pull off every five seconds. So my plan is to cut some of this off and uh, obviously I'll have to clean it up, which will be a task in itself. But then what I can do is um, put some of those standoffs down, cable tie the cables down so nothing moves. And I do plan to replace all this Velcro that I've got on the bottom of my pedals with some dual lock, just to make everything a little bit more stable. So I'm hoping that I won't have to mess around too much with the power. That's all already rooted through. Um, should be a case of putting it back through because I'm not drastically changing where everything is. So, I'm just going to take a minute to set everything up how I want it and uh, I'll check back in with you guys. Okay, so still out I'm going for a bit more uh, tidier and not all crammed together as uh, the previous layout. So, kind of kept mini stuff down here. I'm a bit worried about getting to this switch. This is simply just a selector switch for the MD500, um, but I couldn't really find anywhere. I kind of wanted the MIDI pedals down here, so I had these down here and everything. But as you can tell, there are two new additions um, being the Victory, the Kraken pedal over here, and the Wampler Plexi Drive. So, they're going to take place of the Plexi Drive is going to take over the sort of main guitar sound duties that the Klon clone was uh, kind of satisfying, and the Kraken's gonna take over from the rat distortion for my thicker, heavier sound. So, with that said, I've got to move that one down a little bit because it is a top mount jack, side mounts there, top mounts there. So, next up comes the task of starting to actually wire the thing up. So let's take a look at this pedal patch kit. So what you get in here is a bundle of wire. I bought the, the large pack, so I've got two meters and I've got a total of 20 connectors. So this should do most of my pedals, the calculations, and then you've got a little instruction leaflet on the back here. You can see it. Just tells you how to make them, very simple. And uh, actually, before I do that, I've got to cut off all this uh, Velcro, haven't I? So let's not get ahead of myself. Let's pop that back down there and uh, get to removing some of this Velcro to allow me to put my little tie downs on. So I'll do that and check back with you guys. Okay, so I've placed some of these tie downs on. Let's just repopulate this pedal board, cut off the uh, Velcro where I don't need it. And this should just be a case of treating it like a jigsaw puzzle now. I think it will just uh, slot on very nicely. And as you can see, with the like side mounts, I can have them come in and tie in down to these parts here. Just make it a lot more sturdy that way if I extend it. Kick something too hard, which has happened. Um, things shouldn't just go wrong. So, there we go. Obviously the top mounts on this crack and mean that I'll have to move that down as far as I can. Everything else appears to be okay. So, now let's take a look at these pedal patch connectors. So, it's quite a simple system by the looks of things. You undo the little grub screw on the side, you push the cable in, and uh, once that's done, you should be good. Obviously do the other side as well, but let's grab a little screwdriver if I've got one about. See, I should have prepared this earlier one. Give me a second. You 
knew I had one about somewhere. So what we're going to do is just cut this cable tie that's on this wire. Now, this is very thin, thin wire, so it'll be interesting to see how well it actually does. Now, as far as the pedal patch connect goes, what we're gonna do, what we will start with, if I remove that and get to the back of this MD500, the main reason why I've opted for a system like this is because they go in there so, so nicely. And I mean, look, that pedal can sit right there, no issue whatsoever. So, let's undo this as per the instructions. Now all it says you have to do is push this in firmly and it should be cut at kind of a right angle. By pushing it in, nice and firm, bend this one off because this is a nine, we're gonna do this one at a 90 degree. a little grub screw in which will also tighten up onto the wire itself. Come on. Once you've got it in that is, why is it not? So yeah, this is a little bit fiddly, <laughs> granted. And I've got to be so careful not to actually lose this wire. Now what it is, it's the spring of the cable pushing up against this. So, Trying so hard not to lose this screw, otherwise that will be very bad news. There we go. Thread to grip, tighten that down, which is also onto the cable. And then we have one end done. I mean, you can see how, I'll keep holding that up there with the camera's down here. Um, you can see how slimline that is. So, that can go in there. And routine wise, it's got to go down here and this is the MD500B output, is that? Yeah, B output. So that will be going to the return just there. And obviously, with these things, you always leave a little bit of a service loop. So, bear with me a second. So I tried to retrieve my knife that I dropped down there. I'll do this over the side here. Nice flush cut down. Double check, it's not crushed the inner core. And now, what we should be able to do, I'll just get my laptop going next. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test this using my audio interface, just kind of tap on it and uh, that should tell me whether or not it's working. So, getting up on these connectors, probably be just as fiddly as it was last time. So let's try and make it a little bit easier for myself. I know it's gonna go in that side, like that. I'll tell you what, that, that twists quite well actually. That'll be fine. This is one thing you should always do when you're working with wiring or anything along those lines, something we do in industry, always leave what they call a serviceable amount. So as you can see there, that's got to go into there. Now I've left not a, a massive amount, but just enough that should I need to in the future, I can actually cut a little bit off and remake this cable. So, that's our second one, Little screw. What else I like with this uh, cable kit is they've given me some stickers, which I always love because they always go onto my pedal board case. And I noticed in with the Kraken and in with the Plexi drive, they've also got some stickers included. It's just a nice little thing. I mean, it's not for everybody to have stickers plastered in their cases, but that adds a little bit to it. So eventually, my pedal board's gonna end up just covered 
in a mass amount of stickers. Right, so, now, at the moment I have my main guitar cable plugged in to my audio interface. So when I tap on this, I should be buzzing. If I can actually find the end of the cable. Right, so I don't know how well you can hear this, but that's what I should be hearing if this cable's working. So, let's pop that in there. That cable is currently working. So, now that's done, I can pop it in there, route it around, that goes into there. Now, what I am questioning is should I have gone through straight into the back? I should get away with it on that one. So, as you can see, nice low profile, goes straight into there. So what I'm gonna do now, is just concentrate and start making more and more cables, testing them the same way I've done. And then hopefully I should have a working pedal board at the end. So let me just move some of these pedals. These ones have not got Velcro on the back of them yet, so I don't want to slam them into the ground. So yeah, let's get wiring. Okay, so that took one hell of a long time, but it's all wired up. I know it looks like a bit rat nesty at the moment, but I want to make sure it all works before I cable tie everything down. Um, there's a few areas like from my switcher to this uh, input output box, the loop from the uh, two loops on here and the tuner, which are not using the new cables because I didn't buy enough to do all of them. Um, I've still got a whole reel of 8 metre cable left, so that'll be going in my gig bag for a rainy day. And uh, now, I'm not going to record this properly like I otherwise usually would, but I'm just going to make sure that everything works. So, if I just mute it to start with, that'll be a good start, rather than blowing everyone's ears out. Get myself somewhat in tune so I can at least play like a chord here and there. Right, so, if I go up, currently seven shouldn't be used, so I can go through and individually switch stuff on via this, that's all good, on the low, right. So, first make sure we've got some noise. So that's the little big muff is working. That is good news. Now the Kraken. Oh, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that pedal, I can already tell. Bloody hell, that is. Uh, <laughs> the silence is working, of course. Not play with those too much, I've still got to sort of uh, review them and do all of that. So that's the Wampler. Oh, let's not put those two together. Tube Screamer. Up onto the other bank, we've got MD500. Oh no, sorry, May boost. MD500 bank one, excuse me. Bank A. And the delay. There we go. So, 
that's all working, that is a good sign. So now what I'm going to do is cable tie this all up and we'll have a pedal board. What I hope will be a pretty bulletproof one, but that's, that we'll be able to tell that in time. So let's just switch the marshal off and uh, get this over to the side and start cable tying everything up. I did manage to find a hell of a lot of spare cable ties because yeah, I was a bit worried at one point that I wouldn't have enough. So the trick to doing all this, let's get rid of the power to start with, is trying to feed them through to start with. That's always a good start. So start with this one down here seems to be a bit of a tricky one, but make sure there's not too much tension on cables. I've, as I said before, made sure I've got a bit of a service loop in them. And as you can see, those cables, with a little bit of effort, will not be moving anywhere. And that's why I'm happy to use solderless, because I know once I've gone through this and cable tied them all down properly, which will require some unplugging here and there to get to the standoffs, these are not going to be moving much. And that's part of the whole sort of robustness plan. I like pulled that one so bloody hard. Oh yeah. Right. So they're not moving. What I'll do is I'll go along as I go, trimming these off. Yes, they will be a little bit sharp on the ends, but hopefully, hopefully I won't forget that one day in the future. So this one I'm pulling over here. All right, so what I'll do is I'll probably time lapse this and uh, show you the final product. So that's all done, all nice and tidy. Well, as tidy as I'm making it on the bottom. Obviously I've got to lose some cable somewhere. These are not all custom length on the bottom. And then on the top, all cable tied down. Might go through and cable tie some of these cables together elsewhere. But let's just pop the Kraken back on. Just so you can see it all how it was intended to be. I've got to go power underneath. Now one thing I am a little bit concerned about is the thinness of these cables. I'm hoping it won't be a noise issue. But that, once we've got some, some uh, Velcro on the bottom of these two, um, that's a fairly solid pedal board and it should last me for all my gigs next year. Uh, now I have got to find some kind of uh, solution. Let's see if I can find the actual cable that I was using. There it is, right behind me. This is my current sort of cable that goes from this switch box to the MD500 and as you can tell, the, it's not gonna work. These connectors are way too big. Um, I guess you could loop it around something like that and I could get another, another right angle connector would do that. It's a bit difficult to find the stereo type. So yeah, that is the board altogether. Um, I'm sure Coming up at some point, it'll be after Christmas Day. Uh, it's currently the 20th when I'm recording this. Um, you will hear some demos of the Kraken and the Plexi Drive, which, uh, yeah, they'll be making it onto my setup for next year. So that is pretty much it as far as all is told on the pedal board. Um, so, yeah, I'll uh, do it with an outro now and I'll use that as a chance to talk about this pedal patch system. Okay, so I hope that wasn't the most boring video in the world. I tried to break it out with a little bit of talking here and there, some time lapses, but the whole thing from start to finish, I mean, looking at the time, that 
took me about three hours or so to get it all kind of how I wanted it and, and sort that out, but I'm quite happy with the end result. It seems a lot more solid. Um, we'll see in the future whether or not I've made the right decision by going solderless. As far as that pedal patch solderless kit goes, it's done a real number on my, uh, my fingertips just having to, because what you have to do with it is push that cable in and kind of bend it and hold it in to get that back bit on. Be fiddly at times and it really does uh, hurt. So I can't really uh, play much guitar now. I've got it all assembled because, um, yeah, a little bit raw on the fingertips. But overall, it's quite a easy way of doing it. I can see why people go for the solderless systems from convenience. And I've got to say, out of all those cables that I put together on that bolt, a total of, what was it, 20 cables, all of them were good first time. I had to make another one here and there because I'd made it a little bit too short, but I didn't have any connectivity issues. And when you look at it, it's basically like a little pin in the end that sticks into that middle insulator and uh, then your grub screw kind of tightens into the uh, actual ground connection, which is the, uh, the kind of uh, sleeve around the outside. That's the word I was looking for. So we'll see, we'll see. I'm hoping with it, being all cable tied down now that kicking it won't break it and I'll, I'll, I'll report on that in the future but next thing you'll probably be seeing on this channel are some reviews of the Kraken and the Plexi Drive Mini. Um, initial thoughts just turning them on then I was quite happy with how that sounded to be fair but they're going to be my main sort of two sounds for gigging next year so there'll be a 2023 live rig update it's not gonna be much of an update to be perfectly honest um i'll be doing my 2022 end of year gear rundown showing you everything that i've got in my collection well it's everything in my collection it'll be everything i've got in my pedal board guitars amps i don't go through the rest of my pedal collection because that would take forever but yeah hope you enjoyed this video if you did please comment rate subscribe all that good stuff um let me know, are you guys going solderless on your pedal boards? Have you had any issues with it or are you sticking by the good old soldered connection? But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.